about social media. And I was visiting one of the universities and we sat down in the rector's office and I said, I'm going to talk about things like Facebook and Twitter. And of course, everybody started laughing. I thought, oh my gosh, why are you even talking about that? So I'm not going to talk about social media in general. I'm going to talk about the application of social media and social media marketing for business and how it helps us in business. Uh, I'm responsible, by the way, for our worldwide university program, our social media strategy, our standards program, and some other things. So I have a, that's why they call me community marketing, because they didn't know what else to give the title to. It all builds communities somehow. Um, you're probably familiar with Synopsis, one and a half billion dollar corporation, le uh, leader in our industry, headquartered in, in Mountain View, and we have um, offices all around the world. Obviously, we have an extremely important um, area here in the Synopsis Armenian Education Department that's headed by you guys getting a week in here. And uh, what, what your department has done for Armenia has been uh, remarkable. It's all I can say, just remarkable, and it's being um, applied. Uh, the resources that come from here in Armenia are being used in uh, universities all around the world to build the education systems of the uh, of those engineers as well. So I want to give you, um, you know, my personal thank you for all your efforts over the years. It's really amazing. Okay, so let's talk about social media. You probably aren't surprised to know that Facebook has over a billion active users. Who's on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> Or I should say, Google admit they're on Facebook. Uh, Twitter has over 140 million active users, and people on Twitter are producing 3 million tweets every single day, and I'm sure that number's bigger even now. So who uses Twitter? Yeah, Twitter is a very strange thing. It's really, really strange. And either you like it or you don't, and I happen to really like it, but it is a bizarre way of communicating, and it's not going away. When I first started using Twitter, People would send me articles all the time. Twitter's dead. Nobody's going to use Twitter. Twitter's worthless. Um, now they send me, Twitter is useful. People are using Twitter. Twitter is growing. <laughs> uh, so I, anyway, I, I do enjoy using Twitter. What I found interesting, I learned this a, a few years ago, YouTube has become the second largest search engine over Google. So people go to Google for text and they go to YouTube for video information. Um, and the... Um, Facebook now tops Google for online traffic each week, so more people are on Facebook each week per time, unit of time, than they are on, on Google, which is interesting. So people are really living more and more online. Um, LinkedIn is really important, especially in the engineering community. Engineers feel comfortable with LinkedIn. It doesn't seem weird. It doesn't seem weird like Facebook or really weird like Twitter. They say LinkedIn, okay, I understand LinkedIn. I put my resume, I connect with other people. So um, LinkedIn is, is very well accepted and practically all of our employees have a, a profile on LinkedIn. Do you all have LinkedIn profiles by now? Um, I'm glad because it's really important. Employers these days, the first place they look is on LinkedIn to find out about you. They'll see your resumes, they'll see your connections. LinkedIn recently added something called endorsements, which I think is worthless because, you know, I have thousands of connections in the industry and everybody's going, I endorse her, I endorse her. It, it doesn't really mean anything anymore as much as a personal paragraph from someone that says, this person worked with me and here's what they can do. So maybe people will like endorsements, but personally I think it's kind of a waste of time. Okay, so let me show you some examples of how other companies are successfully using uh, social media. Up in the upper left is Intel's Facebook page. Intel has 13 million fans on Facebook, which is pretty um, amazing. The lower right is Cisco. They have 300,000 fans on Facebook of Cisco. And if you go there and you look, you can see that what these companies are doing is becoming more authentic. They're more like real people. They're not advertising and they're not forcing things in your face. More so, they're trying to engage with their audience and the people who like them. Um, here's Altera. And I think this picture is really creepy and scary because that person has all these tools sticking out of their head. It, it's really an awful image. But they're still very successful. They have many followers on Twitter and they have over 100,000 views of their YouTube videos. So Altera is an example of a small company that's been using social media very, very effectively. So let me talk about how this helps business because people say it, it's nice to talk to your friends and it's nice to watch videos on YouTube, but what does that really mean for a company? So we are looking at social media as the biggest shift 
since the Industrial Revolution. The way that people communicate is turned on its side. Um, some of the statistics up here that you see, um, three and a half billion pieces of content are posted each week on Facebook. That's a huge amount of content. Um, all of the people using the various networks, you know, the, the numbers are up and, and kind of, um, kind of mind, astonishing, mind-blowing. 96% of all young people between the, years, uh, the ages 18 and 35 are on some type of a social network. And I, I, was, I, I saw the pictures of these little guys down here. They're probably sitting here sending messages to each other while they're sitting next door, you know, not even looking at each other, but, oh, yeah. <laughs> but so there's this huge shift that's occurring, and companies are recognizing that. How can we make use of this? Here's some more statistics that are interesting. A third of the bloggers out there talk about products and services from companies. So these are independent people just writing their opinion out there, and people are listening to them and seeing what they have to say. 80% of tweets are done on mobile devices. So imagine what this means if a customer has a bad experience. So if you're in a restaurant, you can immediately say, this restaurant has terrible food. Or if you're using a synopsis design compiler, you can put on Twitter, this is really a great tool. <laughs> um, We've gotten both on Twitter, by the way. We've gotten synopsis tools are terrible, and we've gotten synopsis tools that are great. But what's interesting, I'll, I'll tell a story about a Twitter experience. A gentleman from Berkeley who does research with us put on Twitter, those synopsis people in the operations department are terrible. They treat me really badly, and I'm doing all this research. Why don't I get better respect? And we saw that because we watched Twitter every single day and went, uh-oh, somebody's not happy, and he just told the whole world. So we contacted him and said, what's the problem? And he explained it. We fixed it. We gave him um, some extra tools that he didn't have. He turned around the next day and posted, I got the greatest service from Synopsis, and I really appreciate it, and they listened to me on Twitter. Thank you very much. So we took a bad customer experience and turned it into a good one. Um, companies who pretend that that's not happening, and say, I'm not looking, I'm not using social media, therefore people aren't talking about me, those companies are making big mistakes. Because people are talking about you and they're talking about your brand and you need to listen and then be able to respond appropriately. And you don't say to someone who says synopsis tools are terrible. You don't put on Twitter, yes we are. <laughs> We're great. You know, you actually have to engage in a, in a transparent and authentic way to understand your customer's concerns and, and address them. So we see all these kinds of excuse me, statistics and we say we have to participate as a company. Let me show you, these are two advanced uh, diagrams uh, using social media for business. Um, this comes from the Communications Executive Council, and they are very advanced. We, we rely on them very heavily. So the model on the right is called a hierarchical approach. You'll see the company is in the middle, and the company is sending information and messages out to different channels to reach the right people. So they'll send proper information to their customers, which helps them sell their products, help the company sell if they're in, in the center. However, a more advanced model of social network for business is what's called the network approach. The person in the middle is your customer. They're the stakeholder, not you. You, the company, are off to the side, and you're providing information to that customer, or that stakeholder, but that person is then telling their friends, and their colleagues, and their managers, and their associates, I like this, I don't like this, here's how this works, here's what, what doesn't happen. And in that networked approach, what the person in the middle is doing is helping other customers buy. So you'll make your decisions on what you want to buy based on what your trusted colleagues say, not what the company says. So if the company's out there saying, my product is great, it's great, it's great, that means nothing to people these days. If someone you trust says that product is great, you're very much more likely to believe them. Advertising holds very little value anymore in light of what people are able to, to communicate to each other. Most companies are just beginning with the model on the left. There are very few that use the model on the right. So, so I'll give you an example. Let's say that um, I just met you and I need a new watch because I've lost my watch or my watch is broken. And I notice the watch on your wrist is very attractive. And I say, you know, what brand? Oh. They want to make it 
What I see on TV is artificial. They, they, they make pictures of products that you know, don't look like that. If you see a picture of a McDonald's hamburger, those do not look like that on television in real life. So, so anyway, the whole idea is that people are trusting each other's opinions more than they're trusting the advertising from companies. It's a, it's a change in mindset. <laughs> it's strange to get used to. <laughs> So why would a company like Synopsys, we're in high tech, you know, we don't sell Coca-Cola, we don't sell shoes, we sell very, very sophisticated, very expensive software. Why on earth would we even use social media? So the model that I developed was, up in the upper left, you'll see the adoption of 14 nanometer semiconductor technology. So right now, 14 nanometers is not production, it's not widely used, most people do not design semiconductors at 14 nanometers. However, Synopsys stays right there at the leading edge. Okay, as it's emerging, we study it, we understand it, we promote it, we help develop it. In the same way, we want to stay ahead of the marketing technology, which is social media. So sure, most engineers do not use social networking to help design chips, and they don't support each other when they have questions. However, someday they will especially as the younger generation of engineers comes along and this is natural. This is how I communicate on Facebook. This is how I communicate. So Synopsys wants to be there, able to communicate with the, with the engineers and the customers before. So we want to remain the leadership um, um, aspect that we have in social media as well. <laughs> so here's a, here's a mathematical equation. <laughs> um, your credibility. Are you believable? Are you honest? Combined with the community that you, you um, interact with, that's what equals engagement. So if I have something important to say about low power design, and all of the people here are talking about how Synopsis does low power design in the community, then we're all engaged and we can help each other to the next level. Uh, engineers are smart and everybody's seeing the trend, so eventually engineers will become more users of social media. Um, Okay, I mentioned conversations are happening online about us right now. We can choose to ignore them or we can listen. And we've decided to listen and we've learned a whole lot about what people are saying about us. Um, we have new channels now for reaching our customers. In the past, we didn't have the ability to do a video demo. Here's how you run our software. This is an amazing way to communicate with people. We did not have a way to show on Facebook photos of our employees reaching out to the community to show that we are socially responsible. We never had the ability to show all of our customers and everybody in the world are the tree planting ceremonies in our media that we do every year. So these are channels that we really can connect better with our customers. Um, of course, there are current and potential customers that are out there. This uh, term, earned media, is very important. So today, you can call up a newspaper reporter or someone online and say, I want you to write about me. They may or may not do that. However, if I write a blog post, for instance, and someone in the media reads it and says, really interesting and important, and then talks about it, I have earned some amazing credibility that I wouldn't have earned otherwise. So earned media is a very, very important aspect of using social media. We consider our audience an asset, just like any other asset. So anytime someone gives Synopsys a like, they are endorsing us. They're saying you're a valuable company, and you bring the tools that we need, and you're a leader in uh, technology and advancement. So, so these, the, we value the audience tremendously. Uh, this, is a very, this is like, to me, the essence of using social media for business. It's the content. You have to give valuable content when you're posting on these social media channels. Simply putting on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or YouTube, Synopsys has the best product in the world. That's terrible. Companies should never do that. That's spam. And if they start spamming your Facebook page, or they spam the Twitter networks, 
People are going to completely ignore them and maybe even dislike them. Stop telling me all about yourself because I'm not interested. Instead, give me some valuable piece of information. For instance, did you know that when you're designing a low power chip, if you do it this way, you're going to get better results? That's valuable content that engineers will absorb. So we talk about the fact that you can create a channel, but people won't necessarily find you. You can advertise it, but if you don't have good content, they're not going to pay any attention. What you have to do is think it's not about me. Instead, it's about the audience. And what is it the audience wants to hear? And the phrase that I coined a while ago is, tell me something interesting. I was at a conference, and we were using Twitter. And someone from my company ran in and said, we're doing a, we're doing a presentation in the meeting room next door. Uh, put it on Twitter. And I looked at the guy, and I said, well, what's interesting about it? And he stopped and didn't really know. <laughs> and I said, then I am not going to put on Twitter, go to our meeting, because who cares? Tell me what's important, what's interesting about that, and then I'll put it on Twitter and not before. So tell me something interesting is the secret to deciding what you put as a company on the social channels. This is important. Social media is not a replacement for our existing and traditional marketing efforts. Instead, it's, it augments it and it helps. But we're not getting rid of our existing advertising. We're not getting rid of our existing marketing efforts, um, at least not for the foreseeable future. Uh, we deal with skeptics. And this is us. social media policy. And you can copy the policies, they're out there, you can copy them from Intel and IBM and Cisco, you can copy ours. And in that policy it says do not put trade secrets out, do not give competitive information that you don't want out there. You must protect your company's interests. Um, so we teach our employees, never say, oh, you know, we're developing the next secret so-and-so, because the first thing that Cadence Design Systems will do is grab that and start competing. So no, we never do that. look at your conversations and come up with some ideas that they can come They can look at our conversations and come up with ideas. We can look at their conversations and come up with ideas. <laughs> It, it, it actually, I think it is good. In, in the overall scheme, when the thoughts of engineers and thoughts of companies are out there, it makes us even more competitive. And we know what the industry trends are. Uh, but yeah, we have to be very careful about what we say and never release trade secrets. Um, we, we prevent people from using um, racial slurs, using bad language, from criticizing our competitors. Um, that kind of conversation then become kind of boring? Yeah, they're terrible. They're childish. Um, they're, they're just, they're ridiculous. Uh, one of our competitors would take the synopsis tweets and change it to make it look like it was theirs. And, and we said, oh, are you kidding me? You know? And we didn't respond because, you know, the intelligent audience says, well, that's just stupid, so we ignored it. But yeah, so we were very professional about it um, and very protective of our intellectual property. And yet we do engage in some interesting, interesting dialogue. Um, if a customer uh, can't, or if a customer says, I need this type of a feature for my 14 nanometer design, then that alerts all of us to hurry up and get the other one more on It is different. It's very exciting. Keep us on our Sure. Uh, we hear this all the time. Skeptics say, I don't see the value. I don't see the need for social media. I like the way things work. And so usually what we do is we say, let me show you how it works. Why don't you sit down and try it yourself? And then you'll experience that this really isn't just a, a fading trend. This is here to stay. People will say um, it's too hard to control. Okay, I can't control my messages on social media. You can't. And you should stop trying to control your message because it's the customers in the community that now own your message. So that makes you more transparent and makes you more honest. So you have to do things right because you don't control your messages anymore. Um, a lot of times we hear this isn't relevant to engineering. It's social media is for fun and for you know, Coca-Cola and for you know, fashion. But in reality, we again show engineers, look, here are some of the leaders in our industry who are using this to talk about things. They're blogging, 
They're putting things on Twitter. They're talking about latest industry trends. So some of the engineers who lead our industry are actually here. Um, proof is always important. People are skeptical when there's anything new. So any evidence, the story I told you about the Berkeley gentleman and how we solved the customer problem, that kind of hard concrete proof is what really helps skeptics to, to overcome their, their concerns. Uh, the bottom one is one that's a very common question. What's the return on investment? How do I measure this? This stuff is weird. In reality, social media is much more measurable than traditional marketing. So let's say I put a flyer, a piece of paper, in the mail and I send it to a thousand customers. I have no idea who actually read that. However, if I put something on social media, I know exactly the number of people who clicked on it. I know what country they live in. I might even know their gender. I might know their age, depending on what they reveal. So I can measure this stuff in an incredible way. And you can see on Facebook, I put a picture, and I had you know, a certain number of likes of that picture. I put a press release. I got no likes. Oh, I've learned now to put pictures instead of press releases. So it's extremely measurable. It's not easier to get. So what our reaction would be, let's say someone puts up a beautiful idea. First thing we would do is contact that person and say, we are interested in hearing more about what you have to say. Would you like to share your experiences? Would you like to meet our engineers, our, our technical experts, to have a discussion? Um, how can, what, what is it we can do to help further your idea? So that's the engagement part. Um, we, we would not say, well, that's a good idea, and then copy it in secret and go into them. But we would, we would engage with that person. No, we have had very few cases like that so far. Um, this is all still in its infancy. So right now, people with brilliant ideas are still using more traditional ways to bring them to fruition. They, they would bring them to the, through the university, or they would bring them through R&D, or they would be working at a company. But someday, I really believe this can happen easily because you as an individual, maybe you're not even employed and you have a really good idea that you can put out there without having to go through a uh, you know, long... Does anyone think that uh, this kind of social media content could be subject for IP, uh, IP security or something like that? Or most definitely. Social media will have a lot of intellectual property implications. And people are now starting to sort through. So if I took a picture of everybody here in the room and posted it on Facebook and said I you know, met a bunch of wonderful people, that's probably okay and I don't have to get permission from everybody in the room. However, if I took that picture and sold it, there comes the intellectual property question. Do I own the picture? Do I own the picture because you're in it? Do you own the picture? So there was a famous lawsuit, I believe it was in New York City. There was an artist who had a camera on the street, and he was taking pictures of people who come and stand in various poses. And he was selling his artwork for a lot of money. And one of the subjects who had been photographed without being, he didn't know, um, filed a lawsuit and said, that's me, I want money because that was my picture. And the court ruled, no, that's not yours. You were standing on the street in public. The picture was taken. The artist makes the money, and the, the picture, person in the picture got nothing. You don't want the photos reflected from your face. Commons is one solution to it. Yeah, sharing it but giving credit to the original source. Uh, so the laws will change. So, so here's a theoretical situation. What if I had a camera right here and I'm making a video of you without your permission? Is that something fair that I can post? I don't know. I think not. <laughs> I think that if I want to record you, then I need to approach you and say, may I please make a video of you? And if you give me permission, that implies that yes, I can post it. 
Um, so it's changing. The, the laws will catch up eventually. Just like any technology, the technology goes out there and then the lawyers and the society says, now what do we do about this? Um, genetic engineering is going to be another field where when you're genetically engineering organisms and creatures, um, what, what type of moral laws are, are going to come in place? So it is changing, and there is, is no solution, but it's a very important concern. So if you think about whatever I say, whatever I do in public, whatever I write, whatever I post, if I want that public, go ahead and do it. If I have any hesitation, use common sense and don't post things that you don't want to go public. So if you put a great idea out there, um, you have possibly given up your rights because you told the whole world about it. Yeah. So keep your secrets to yourself. It would be wonderful if you would do that and you know that by, by just posting that comment. Right, right. So someday there will be that type of um, infrastructure um, for, from a legal perspective, but not to my knowledge today. By the way, do we have your permission to read it? Yes. <laughs> no, I don't mind. I'm not shy, you can tell. <laughs> that we are active on. Uh, what time, how's the time? Because I can wrap up real fast now. 15 minutes? Okay, okay. I try to be sensitive to people's time, uh, as well as to pronouncing their names. But, uh, <laughs> I think I'm better at time than name pronunciation. Okay, so we have six channels. I'll go through each one of them very quickly. We chose not to go on Google Plus yet. We don't use Pinterest. We don't use the myriad of networks out there. Um, because it takes a lot of effort and research, resources, so you know we we pick the top the top ones to participate in. Why do we have what? <laughs> oh, this is a this is a good question. For this year, one of our goals is to create an international social media strategy. So we started with what we knew in our country. We need to understand Russia, we need to understand China, they have Ren Ren, and you know, we need to understand the whole, what does it mean from a, a, a global perspective? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think um, Facebook is, is quite global, Twitter is very global. Um, and, and so is YouTube, and so these ones, um, well, China, of course, blocks Facebook. You cannot use Facebook in China. The government censors it. Um, but these were the ones that we saw right now as being more pervasive than others. And uh, yeah, so we do need to develop that strategy for Synopsis to have a, an international social media strategy. We have lots of work to do. <laughs> Oh. We started with blogging, and blogging to us is the way that we show our experts to the world. So we have 18 blogs ranging from topics like verification, analog design, and standards. Um, you can probably guess who writes the standards blog. <laughs> um, and we show that um, our employees are experts in their field. This brings a lot of credibility to Synopsys when our the real people are writing. It's not marketing speak, it's not advertising. It's, for instance, how do you design a low power circuit? How do you use this? How do you do that? Um, it's been very effective. The challenge that we have is finding bloggers who will be consistent in their writing because it does require an investment in their time. And so someone who has, a good write, who has good writing abilities is able to engage their audience, but yet they have to post regularly. That <coughs> continues to be our challenge because everybody has a lot of things that can play their game. LinkedIn is, again, the most accepted network uh, amongst the engineering community. We have two presences on LinkedIn. The first one is our company page, which we use largely for recruiting. So we post our jobs there. We have people networking with each other. So uh, LinkedIn page, company page is all about recruiting. We also have a Synopsys Users Group LinkedIn group. And this was started by a, um, a customer. And this is where Synopsys users can talk to each other about interesting content. They don't do problem solving there yet. Uh, maybe someday that'll happen. This is a closed group that we try to monitor so that people feel a little safer, that we're all Synopsys users. But um, if someone works at, I'll say, Cisco, and then they change affiliations to go to work at Cadence, 
now we have Katie's people in our closed group, so we try and monitor that all the time. And again, we're very careful about intellectual property, just not, just not go on this channel. Um, LinkedIn does not allow you to customize very much. LinkedIn is, you get what you get. Um, so you can post in discussions and jobs and so forth, but there's not a lot of flexibility with it. And the big challenge that we have is to promote active discussion in the Synopsis users group. There's still, people are shy, and they don't necessarily want to share their ideas. Instead, they're mostly posting articles of interest, read this, did you hear about this, and, and sharing information, but they're not really discussing anything um, in depth yet. Facebook, we have one page for our overall company, and then we have other targeted pages for, uh, for instance, our optical research group has their own Facebook page. Synopsis Press, where we publish books, that has its own Facebook page. But they're all liked um, from the, the main page of Synopsis. We use this to show our personality, that we are people. We show pictures of what we're doing, our community activities. We talk about seminars and activities and events that are coming up. We found that photos, again, are the most popular on Facebook. People love to see pictures of Synopsis and our employees and, and our customers and things that are, that are happening. The big challenge we have with Facebook is that half of our fans are customers and the other half are employees. So how do we provide enough useful information for both of these distinct audiences? And I have no idea. We'll figure this out. But I found that very, very curious. So far, we decided not to have separate Facebook pages for employees and customers because there is a lot of common information that people want. But that one just remains a mystery and very, very interesting to me. Twitter. I love Twitter. We have over 3,000 followers. If you use Twitter, our name is just Synopsis. Our hashtag is pound SNPS, that's our uh, stock, uh, stock exchange symbol. We deliver real-time information, quick bursts of things that are happening right now. We, um, again, monitor this constantly. What are people saying? We've learned a whole lot. We compose tweets that do things like, oh, did you know we have a new blog post here that you might be interested in? Do you know that we have a seminar coming up? Did you know that uh, Karen just interviewed the president of the USB Implementers Forum? Did you know this? Did you know that? And then again, we watch for conversations happening. The big challenge is we need to teach the people at Synopsis who use Twitter how to post something interesting. Don't tell people what you had for lunch because they don't care. <laughs> YouTube. Sorry. Yes. Going back to Twitter, you said you learned a uh, few things by monitoring. Oh, sorry. Sure. Okay. By monitoring. What are examples of things? Um, we've learned, for instance, that when Chief and Chan, our president, spoke at an event, that there were people who were really interested in this and inspired by him. We've learned that when, um, uh, I forget the exact content that I posted, there were news agencies from other parts of the world who picked up that and said, this is interesting and passed it on. So we see how influential we can be. We watch what people say when we acquire a company. So we made a major acquisition of Magma Design Automation, and we watched people say, this is really good, this is really bad. So we're learning what the community thinks about our mergers and acquisitions. Does, does a company of this scale synopsis, and so maybe this is a yes and no question, you do or you don't, or you can generalize to the industry of similar companies. Would a synopsis be hiring people to actually uh, conduct statistical analyses? I mean, the actual data analytics, where data analytics meets IT. Are there actually positions, or do you foresee this happening in the future, where there's actually going to be uh, units within your social media group who are the backroom crunchers, so to speak, of actually uh, running the statistics on this and actually scientifically deconstructing uh, this more than a feel of, or maybe that's exactly what's going on. The answer is yes. I have two full-time employees, plus other people who help, who every Monday we analyze a dashboard that we put together that shows every post, the trends, who's listening, who's not. We analyze that data on a constant basis to decide how effective we're doing, what should we change, what's right, what's wrong. Um, I hired both of them as marketing graduates, and they became our social media marketing uh, specialists. 
Um, we have the automated dashboard that gathers all the data from, from all of our channels and builds graphs and charts and we can watch them. It's very interesting, very important. Um, Cisco, we visited their social media monitoring center a few months ago. I was so jealous. They have massive monitors where they're looking at what people are saying all over the world and, and generating trends and analysis. It's very, very important. Since, since social media is so measurable, all that data is there, and the analytics that are available are, are extremely important. So the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, Facebook itself produces analytics. YouTube produces analytics. I can tell you when I put a YouTube video up how long people watched it when they dropped off and how that compares to other videos of the same kind to see if I'm being effective or not. So it's a really exciting field, really exciting. Uh, so when I hired these people, it, everybody was jealous. It's like, what? You, you spend your whole day on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and then they pay you? And then they said, yeah, isn't this great? <laughs> it's a very enviable position that's be, becoming more and more real. Uh, I don't know if I have a chart in here, but um, the trends of companies investing in social media and hiring people is growing and growing and growing. Um, YouTube gives us an opportunity to show demos, events, take people places that they couldn't go any other any other place. If you go to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash synopsis, um, we have playlists for uh, verification. So if you're a verification engineer, you can go down and see all the verification videos. If you want to see interviews from interesting people in the industry, we have Conversation Central there, and that's where the video is posted of um, me talking with Jeff Ravencraft from the USB Implementers Forum. And if you, um, at the very bottom, we have a playlist that's called Discover the World of Chips. It's a series of short videos about how computer chips are manufactured and designed, and it's for a non-technical audience. So if any of your friends or your family want to know, you know what is it that you, what do you do anyway, um, show them these videos and, and it'll explain just in very simple terms, you know, how chips are layered and then um, uh, how we design them with electronic design automation tools. Um, and you'll recognize the person in the video. <laughs> so our challenge in YouTube is finding people who will post and produce regular content with a, a good value. Um, my team does not make the videos. We rely on the individual product teams to produce their own videos. Nice Certainly. Another challenge, well, generally I think people have with YouTube is getting people to actually get to that channel and watch it, and, or, or have subscribing so they get the, it's, it's pushing the, the to reach out to your audience. Yes. There's a marketing problem. Yeah, exactly, because you can have a beautiful YouTube channel and nobody will know it exists because there's a, such a massive amount of information out there. And so we put together an active marketing plan for YouTube and we do for the other channels. How can we approach people, usually in a traditional manner? So we have an email distribution for all of our customers and in there we'll say, by the way, did you know we have a YouTube channel? We have a university program newsletter that goes to all the students and professors in our university program. And we'll say, join us on Facebook. And so you do have to make a conscious effort for people to be able to find you. And then once they found you, the content will keep them there. But you're absolutely right, it is a marketing challenge. I should add that to the slide. <laughs> so, in conclusion, Social media is going to continue to grow. There's some charts and, and so forth. Here's, a, here's the marketing chart, marketing spend that you can see since uh, um, 2009 up until 2012, the percentage that's being spent on um, uh, what they're spending now, what they're projecting in the next few years coming up. So uh, incredible growth in spending for social media marketing. We're going to continue, We're going to, continue to uh, come across as the trusted source of information in our industry.
Yeah. 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 There is so much stuff out there. And the answer is how do you separate the signal from the noise, right? There is so much garbage. There can be total falsehoods. Um, a few years ago, I forget who the celebrity was. Someone put on Twitter, so and so died. And immediately, everybody, oh my gosh, he's dead. And he said, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm still here. You know, and that died out after a day. But, you know, that, that was really frightening in a way. No, I'm alive. So to me, there's three ways that you sort through everything. The first way is use your own common sense. Okay, think about it. If you see something that says something outlandish or something that is just doesn't make sense, then you can use your own filter. So we all have intelligence to be able to use our own common sense. That's the first filter. For example, is going to strike your common sense? Oh, uh, you know, so, so if I see that, I don't believe that at face value. I'm going to go read other sources. I'm going to do investigations. I'm going to, I'm going to learn more than just that one item that's posted. Um, so I never take a statement like that at face value because that it's too dangerous. Um, it, it, with every, I'm going to take a sidetrack and I'll come back to the two. For every great thing that human beings invent, there's a really negative, dangerous side to them. So nuclear energy has brought amazing power to the world for electricity and for you know better health and, and life. It also brings nuclear bombs for destruction. So social media will bring amazing ways that we can communicate, to understand each other, to share knowledge. It can also bring great destruction if it's in the wrong hands. So, um, so we have to be careful, is what I'm saying. This is a, a very powerful shift in the world. We can't deny it because it's reality. But we have to use it properly and be very socially responsible. So that's my philosophy. Anyway, <laughs> the other two filters. The second filter, if you don't you know, trust your own common sense when you see something on a social network, ask your trusted colleagues. So certainly there's someone that you respect their opinion that you know that when they believe it, it's probably true. So that's where your network, um, your community is, is who you rely on for uh, sorting through the, the mass of stuff. The third is what we're starting to call curators. So these are respected people. Maybe they came from the media. Maybe they're experts in their field. Their job will be to sort through everything and gather up things that they believe are accurate and make sense. And they will become your trusted source of information amidst all this massive stuff that anybody can post. So um, they might be similar to today's news reporter that you trust or um, a newspaper editor, um, a business leader, um, a governmental leader. But these, these people that we call curators will be gathering all of the important things away from all of the nonsense. So those are the three sort of filters that will help us to survive the onslaught <laughs> of, of content that's, that's out there. <laughs> OK, so you're going to see a lot of change. These are all the things that are going to disappear. <laughs> Paperback books will be gone. Uh, car keys, you're not going to have car keys anymore. Um, paper maps, I haven't looked at a paper map. I don't think I should read one anymore. Um, your alarm clock is going to disappear because it's all going to be on your handheld device. Uh, people are very sad about paper newspapers going away. They're very sad, but you know we don't use animal skins and quill pens anymore. To write. We don't write on cave walls, and so we won't be writing on paper in the future. Um, no coupons, resumes are gone because of LinkedIn. Uh, toll booth operators, you know, they're out of job, they have to, they have to find something else to do. Uh, phone lines, you know, landlines are going out of, out of existence. And all of it's very exciting to me anyway. And I can't wait to see what the next you know, 10, 20, 30 years are going to look like. So we've had good success. I encourage you to follow us if you want to find out more about what we're up to. Uh, do comment if you find content on there that's helpful or not. And, Help help me improve our programs.
questions uh, throughout the talk. If uh, maybe we have time for uh, one, one or two more now, and then uh, maybe if there's more in the future, uh, maybe folks can contact. Contact you, is that okay? You can find me on Twitter, Karen Bartleson, all one word. You can find me on Facebook, you can find me on LinkedIn. Not surprising. You can email me. You can even write me a letter, but it would take like weeks before I get it. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck, everybody. I'm excited for your future. You'll be awesome.